And the unexplained infertility was just like, kind of like the diagnosis of fibromyalgia where it's like, well, we don't know what to call this. So we're just gonna give it a name. <laughs> Um, and they, you know, really couldn't find anything clinically wrong, but I was continuing to either not get pregnant or continuing to miscarry my pregnancies, which is an incredibly emotional process. So this stopped me down this path of regenerative health. I was able to heal my entire body naturally, which was told to me that I would be on medications for the rest of my life. Um, and I refused to believe that. So with the power of plants and proper protocols and herbalism, I healed everything in my body, which brought me to this level of teaching that I do now in regenerative health and how I sought out all of my extra credentials um, to really support others to thrive as well. I've got somebody in the waiting room. Um, and so moving forward from that, it became very clear that we don't do a very good job preparing women for pregnancy or preparing women for what's to come after pregnancy or even during pregnancy. So I really wanted to highlight this call on maternal wellness and maternal wellness begins in your conception phase. So it on average, you know, not on average, it is the, the facts are that the egg that's being released that month that you are ovulating is from three months prior. Same with the sperm. So it's really important that the three months up to conception we are really taking care of our health. I mean, even before that, of course, but if you're really trying to have a strong fetus, um, you're looking to have the cleanest opportunity in your lymphatic system and lymphatic health, you wanna be conscientious of your health the three months prior and beyond before conception, both mom and dad. Then we move into this pregnancy phase and we have like, let's say what, 10 to 12 um, prenatal appointments. And then we have one postpartum appointment. One, you're like, here you go. There's this live kid you have, good luck. And so we just really don't serve women well. And so I wanna talk about you know, nutrition and prevention of disease and all of the things that women experience. And sadly, we have some staggering statistics here in the United States and worldwide over 565,000 women die per year in pregnancy. Um, and that's crazy. And we have large numbers of those actually in the United States. We have like a really disproportionate level of death and disease in pregnancy. Um, and then we have disease on the rise in children as well. So we're seeing 46% of children right now with a chronic disease, whether it's asthma, severe allergies, um, whether it's ADHD, autism. And right now, the staggering statistics for those are one in 36 children are diagnosed with autism. Those were the numbers as of 2019. Um, as of 2020, 2021, those numbers are actually looking more like one in 25. So we are rapidly increasing our rate of disease and um, lack of you know, maternal wellness overall. We're seeing um, the statistics that show that 70 up to 75%, the range is 50 to 75, up to 75% of women report severe postpartum depression or postpartum anxiety. And then a small percentage, about 5% experience postpartum psychosis. And so this is some staggering statistics to hear that in the most beautiful time of your life, you're bringing in this amazing being, you should be so excited and wrapped in love and just feeling amazing. And women are suffering. They're suffering from depression, anxiety, pelvic prolapse, like you name it, things are not going well in the body. And the reason for this is improper nourishment for mom. So I wanna bring some attention to, to the way our body works and how our lymphatic systems work and some of the most common diseases. And I say disease because there's a lack of ease or flow in the body, but disease doesn't exist in other species. So the disease that is most common in pregnancy is um, our gestational diabetes, preeclampsia, coleostasis, and just like overall, uh, most women are dealing with like inflammation everywhere. Like they have the fat ankles, they and they go, oh, it's just I'm pregnant. Actually, that's not true. It's common, but it's not normal. I had zero inflammation in my pregnancy. So during my pregnancy, my ankles never swelled. I had, you could see my small ankles the entire time. My feet were never puffy. 
Um, I didn't deal with hands and face puffy. I moved and worked all the way up until the very end of my pregnancy. And people are like, wow, I cannot believe you're not, you you're like, don't have the pregnant ankles. And I'm like, how is that a thing? Or like water is pooling in your body to like make your ankles fat just because you're pregnant. And so this is like some of the things that we get and like, oh, the nausea, like, oh, it's, you have morning sickness. That's, that's normal. It's actually not normal. It's common. Um, and so nausea is a sign that the lymphatic system is, is very acidic. And the acidity of the lymphatic system, the body is actually attempting to clean out your lymph for baby. So you're actually, your body's kind of fasting you. Usually most women say like, I can only eat like watermelon or something really simple. Um, and it's because the body is cleaning out lymphatic acidosis and cleaning out lymphatic waste to make a clean space for the baby because your lymphatic fluid is your baby's lymphatic fluid. So they start their life with what you give them from your body. So we really want to give our bodies, our babies, the best opportunity to start life. Now, if you're watching this call and you've already conceived and you've already birthed that baby, do not feel any regret or remorse. You don't know what you don't know until you know. And there are ways to help our children and to serve the cleansing of our children as well. Um, so I have two older kids that I didn't know any of this. And then my two babies, I knew all of this and they're very different children. My babies are so healthy. Their skin is perfect. They poop every day. They've never been on an antibiotic. Like, you know, they've just been so healthy. And then my olders were not like that. You know, my son had eczema, he had dermatitis. Um, he had really bad eczema red, but I, I put steroid cream on him. He had ear infections. He had constipation. You know, I did what I thought I was doing right. I fed my kids what my doctors told me to feed them. I ate what my doctors told me to eat. I brought my kids to the doctor. I got the things that they told me to do. And I had all these issues. And so um, this is not an anti-doctor talk by any means. I want to be clear on that. This is just like a more like, how can we prevent some of these situations? It's more of a preventative care conversation. And because doctors are not trained in nutrition, this is just outside their scope of practice. So they're really great at saying like, okay, this is what you're dealing with. And here's our solution for it. Here's, um, you know, a medication or a topical cream or an antibiotic. But what we do in regenerative health and understanding regenerative health is the foundation of health from the inside out. And so we heal from the root cause. So if your kid is having eczema or dermatitis or psoriasis, it's actually a sign that the kidneys are weak, the lymph is backed up, and the body is pushing that waste through the skin. Now, if it's progressed to psoriasis, there's a fungal overload in the lymph system. And so now there's fungus in the lymph and the infection is coming through the skin, which will be that pussy or flaky rashing. Um, so I wanna pause for a moment and just kind of break down the simplicity of the human body. We are trillions of cells and two fluids. We have blood and we have lymph. The blood feeds the glands and the organs, the lymph cleans the glands and the organs. And the blood is our main pump system. We don't have to think about it. The lymph is our sewer system. Your body has to flush, the, you have to flush the toilet. It's the bathroom of your body. And so with that being the bathroom of your body, this is the system where all dis-ease lies in. So as your body is eliminating waste, just like we eat and poop, our cells eat and poop. They do the exact same. And Jen, will you give me a nod? Can you hear a lot of background noise? You're good? You're okay. good. All right, great. Somebody just started doing construction outside. <laughs> um, but so just like we eat and poop, our cells also eat and poop. So they have to take their waste and then they dump, they take what they need and they dump their waste into the lymphatic system. Well, this is the sewer system of the body. And so it should be bringing this waste to the kidneys and the kidneys should be filtering it out through the urine. And how we see that filtration is, is your pee cloudy? Does it have consistency and flakes to hit? That's a sign that your body is actually eliminating waste properly. And most people aren't eliminating waste. And when we undergo pregnancy, not only does our blood double, but our lymph system gets under more pressure because we're providing lymph for mom and baby. And our liver takes a, a big toll on because our hormones start to shift a lot. So all these systems get added stress to them. So if we have an unfiltering, if we have unfiltering kidneys and we have a lymphatic system that's backed up, we're gonna have inflammation. What does inflammation cause? Chronic pain, swelling, fat ankles, puffy face and hands. All of those things are signs that there's lymphatic acidosis in the body and it's not leaving through the kidneys and out through the urine 
because the kidneys are unsupported or they need to be cleansed or we're having way too much protein. Um, and so I want to break down some of these beliefs around how much protein is enough protein. Um, so our body actually doesn't use protein. We use amino acids, which are the building blocks of a protein structure. But my favorite saying is people eat meat to be strong like an ox and they forget that the ox eats grass. And so reminding ourselves that when we are eating meat, we're actually getting secondhand amino acids. We're not getting primary amino acids. Amino acids actually come in their whole and digestible form from plant life. And so moms are just eating a lot of heavy stuff because they don't know any better. We're also taught in pregnancy to get our dairy in and to make sure that we're getting enough calcium. Your body does use a lot of calcium when you're growing that baby. So we'll see mom feel like she's aging or she's getting, you know, the crow's feet on her eyes or whatever it is, or varicose veins is really common to develop or spider veins during pregnancy. And that is a sign that the body is in an acidic space and it's actually using calcium to buffer acids. And so when we, when we have acids floating around in the lymphatic system, our body will use water, fat, cholesterol, or calcium to buffer the tissues and cells and the acidosis that's present inside the body. So when we are experiencing this, we're actually, our body is taking calcium. It's just taking it. Like, I'm going to take that. I'm going to wrap it around the cell. We're going to make the cell perfect and alkaline. And so we start to lose our way. Well, when that we start to lose calcium, which is a parathyroid weakness, we are significantly more at risk for postpartum depression. And postpartum depression is literally a parathyroid weakness and a lack of proper levels of calcium and micronutrients in the body. So we set moms up for failure because when we're eating high amounts of dairy, not only is dairy extremely acidic to the body, it congests the lymphatic system, it builds waste inside the system. So dairy is one of the highest mucus forming foods and hormone filled foods. So now our endocrine system is being disrupted. Our hormones that are already all over the place are more all over the place because we are drinking from a cow, which is designed to take a 50 pound calf and turn it into a 500 pound cattle in one year. Why would we put that in our body, right? So those growth hormones are incredibly bad for our pregnant bodies and incredibly bad for our lymphatic system. So now we're building waste, we're building mucus in the lymph and we're feeding it to our baby. And so our baby is coming out with a stagnated lymphatic system. And then whether you choose to vaccinate or choose not to vaccinate, it's all personal preference, but we're seeing vaccination injury rise. And it is, part of it is our scheduling of vaccines. Part of it is all the chemicals that are in vaccinations. But a lot of it is that the baby's lymph systems are so compromised, they can't handle what's coming into their body. So we're seeing seizures and we're seeing, you know, some serious damage from these things. So my passion is to share to mamas that like, just because you're pregnant doesn't mean you have to suffer. Like you should actually be able to feel really good. You shouldn't have nausea when your body's alkaline. You should have lots of energy. Yes, you need to go to bed earlier in the first trimester. You're growing a human. But when we can actually feed our body the right foods, we can completely prevent hypertension. We can completely prevent gestational diabetes coleostasis. So gestational diabetes is, you know, when you have your blood sugars are, you know, coming too high. And what does that come from? So I want to break down diabetes type one and type two. A type one diabetic is more of a genetic condition, but can be reversed still with a lot of work. But type two diabetes is 100% diet related. It's all up to the diet, what inflammatory foods you're having and how much your liver is not able to break down the level of bile that you have. But the other portion of that is to understand gut health. So our gut has a tight lining. It's called tight junctions in the gut membrane. And when these are, these are broken easily through acid forming foods like coffee, alcohol, refined sugars, gluten, and then like your dairy doesn't do well, good things for the gut either. Um, but those are the top foods. And then glyphosate is the biggest issue. So glyphosate is a neurotoxic carcinogenic pesticide that is deemed safe and legal in the United States. And it is sprayed at 2.5 million pounds a year on American soil alone. Um, 
and no, sorry, 4.5 million pounds and then 5 billion worldwide. So glyphosate is in our air, is in our water, it's on our food. So mama is making sure that you are eating organic if it's in your budget. And if it's not start, you know, finding like there's organic resources for, there's a food drive in Minneapolis that's completely organic, that's weekly. If you need info on it, contact me, I'll get it out to you. Um, Costco, Aldi, all these things. There's like options that you can really get organic produce into your body. But when you are not eating organic, you are eating this chemical pesticide that is causing a severe level of hypoxic injury in the gut. And when we have this hypoxic injury in the gut, it tears holes in the tight junctions of the gut lining and that gut lining starts to permeate. And so it's like leaking in all your membranes from your gut to your spleen, to your blood. And so what we start to see is the fatty liver condition forming from gut injury. So when things are leaking into the gut, the liver has to take care of it. So now we've got the liver pulling up and developing glycogen stores and fatty deposits on the liver. Well, what happens when we have fatty liver? The insulin resistance gets all messed up. So you're either underproducing or overproducing insulin. Um, when we have fatty deposits on the liver, the body has a very difficult time producing enough bile and well, or it'll make the bile, but the bile can't get out of the liver because of these deposits. And so when the bile can't get out of the liver, moms have a hard time breaking down fats. And when we have that happen, this is what develops as coleostasis of the liver. This will be diagnosed through a blood test um, with your doctors if, if you do have something, but the signs of pre-coleostasis, just like when you can be pre-diabetic, you can be pre-coleostasis, um, is itchy skin rashes, not being able to sleep at night, like the insomnia and the itching getting really bad at night is a pre, that's a liver condition that's happening in pregnancy due to inflammation, too many toxins and too much fat on the liver from gut injury and from pesticide injury. And so I want to um, paint this picture of understanding the importance of the power of what we're putting in and then the importance of understanding how much extra support we need as women. So in addition to glyphosate causing injury in the human, it also causes significant injury in the soil. So that same hypoxic injury happens to the soil. And what we see is that the soil is completely lacking its micronutrients and it's lacking its essential amino acids, which amino acids are the building blocks of life. They are what build bone, hair, skin, connective tissue. They help develop the brain. And that is such an essential piece of building this human. And so what we're seeing right now is a lot of miscarriage and a lot of infertility. And the biggest part of this that they're finding is because we're, we're literally missing pieces of information. So it's like trying to spell out the alphabet while you don't have your vowels. So a mom will have a sperm implant in the egg and we've got this, we've got this you know, implantation happening but then the body starts trying to form this baby and there's not enough information there. There's not enough information present. So we're lacking essential amino acids, essential proteins that build the brain, develop the fetus and the body won't have the set that it needs and we lose the baby or we miscarry the baby. And unfortunately we're seeing 50% of all Americans report an infertility issue, 50%. And so I wanna paint this picture just a little bit deeper. This started in 1980. We started chemical pesticide farming in 1980. And by 2020, we've seen this just skyrocket disease and infertility and postpartum depression and anxiety. And so in 1980, we started spraying glyphosate, which is your active ingredient in Roundup and now is in all of the off-brand um, fertilizers as well. We saw autism rise from one in 6,000 children to one in 36, and now is one in 25. We've seen ADHD rise by over 60% as attention deficit disorder, which is all an adrenal and the uh, gut weakness. Um, we've seen disease rise from 4% to 46% in children, which is unacceptable. And we've seen postpartum rise by 65%. So we're having a massive increase in postpartum depression, postpartum anxiety, postpartum psychosis. So the most beautiful time of a mother's life becomes absolute heck for them. 
it's like they're, you know, their their emotions are all over the place. And the reason why this is is because your hormones are developed in your gut. 80% of all your hormones, your serotonin, your melatonin, your dopamine. So how well you sleep, how much joy you feel, it's all produced in your gut. And when we have this level of gut injury, it the glyphosate is a major endocrine disruptor. And so the endocrine disruptor will create this estrogen dominance and a very low amount of progesterone and testosterone. So you'll feel extremely fatigued all the time. You'll feel emotional, like you can cry at the drop of a pin. You'll feel overly anxious about your baby, like something terrible is going to happen to my baby, like these irrational levels of fear. Like obviously as a mom, we our worst nightmare is anything happening to our babies, but we'll have an irrational level of fear that can, can consume you. And this is literally a gut imbalance. Like your brain is not broken, mamas. It's not. We are just imbalanced and undernourished. So what we're seeing overall as a population is we are overly toxic and underly nourished. We're missing the essential things we need in our body to thrive. So moving forward from that, then we have these babies coming into the world. And the babies are coming in with the same weaknesses that we pass down. So how do we help ourselves? And how do we help our babies? And so if you have a baby or if you have a child or you, you know, there are solutions to help getting them alkaline, focus on your fruits. Kids love fruit. Fruit is the highest vibrational food in the world. Um, it cleanses all of your tissues and cells. Uh, fruits are your cleaners, veggies are your builders. Focus on the fruits and their lymphatic systems will start to clean. But now how do we bridge the gap for moms? How do we bridge the gap for what they're not getting in their diet? And so oftentimes we think, okay, I have to eat eggs or I have to drink milk, um, but eggs are extremely mucus forming and highly toxic. They're actually the equivalent of smoking cigarettes in the body from, through some of the most recent research studies. So we have to look at food differently. How do I get micronutrients and amino acids and building structures into my body? So in search of that is how I found the, the system that we work with now. Um, we use organic and regenerative superfoods that are coming from deep regenerative soils um, that have totally changed my life and my postpartum experience. So with Ash, who is just turned eight months, I've had such a beautiful experience where I, I feel great. Like other than the fact that he's my only baby that doesn't sleep, I still feel incredible compared to that. Like I'm not sleeping and I, I'm fully functioning as a full-time entrepreneur running a clinic and running my online business. Um, and so we, what, like, I just want to really ingrain that, like what you're experiencing might be common, but it's not normal. And I think when we go to our doctors and we say, you know, we're experiencing this, oh, that's just part of motherhood. It's actually not. And you can feel amazing in your body. And so how we do this is by healing the damage that has occurred. We need to remove the chemical pesticides out of your body. And we need to flood the body with the proper nutrition so that you start thriving. And then through our milk, we are transferring this into our babies. And the glyphosate removal that we work with also transfers into our babies. So I work with 100% organic supportive protocols that provide your body with all of the essential amino acids that you need, the building blocks that you need for mom and for baby. And I noticed in my postpartum journey, I had like skin that my daughter could grab, my two and a half year old, when she was nursing. And I was like, what is happening? I was having a complete breakdown of my connective tissue system. My body was not getting what it needs. And so my body was just taking from itself to give to the baby. I was literally being sucked dry. So when you're in this breakdown, we need to have this ability to rebuild and to repair tissue and connective tissue. So the amino acids changed my life. That's when my hair started growing like crazy. My skin tightened up. I started having way more energy. My bones felt stronger. I even remember like my wrists starting to ache when I was nursing Mila. Like I could feel that I was like losing, I was losing my way. Um, and then the, my second favorite thing for mamas is a micronutrient shake. It's all organic. It's all sprouted. It's all wind dried. Um, and it has all of your essential micronutrition that you need that we aren't finding in our food that are creating this depletion for mamas. And so I recommend mamas are on two micronutrient shakes a day and 10 amino acids a day and when their babies are young. Um, and then as they grow and that if the mom's a full-time nursing, then we change protocols a little bit and add a little more nourishment in even from there. 
Um, and then the glyphosate removal is imperative for mom and baby. So we work with an herb that is completely safe during pregnancy and nursing. And it's scientifically proven and third-party tested to remove glyphosate and chemical pesticides out of your body and reduce the C-reactive protein by 74%. And so that C-reactive protein is that inflammatory protein. So we start taking the inflammation down in the body. We start getting the nutrients to absorb better. We start having the proper nutrition to deliver to the cells, to mom and baby, whether it's through milk or by her baby being in utero. And then we work with a tart cherry juice that's amazing for inflammation. So it reduces all your inflammation. It's like literally you just flush out the inflammation, it helps with deep sleep, which so many mamas have trouble sleeping from discomfort and just hormone shifting and things waking you up at night. So you'll be producing lots of melatonin from the cherry juice, getting deep sleep, getting all your antioxidants and your polyphenols. And it's also super rich in vitamin C, which helps you absorb iron, which can often happen. We can get anemic in pregnancy. We can get that low iron because the liver is working so hard. So those are some of my favorite things for mamas. And then our kids need, like how many of you mamas, you can drop a one in the comments if you want, have trouble getting your kids to eat enough plants. The chat is disabled, Carrie. Oh no, that's weird. Um, how do I change that? Security. There you go. There we go. Okay. So how many of you mamas have um hard time getting your babies to eat enough fruits and veggies? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So my favorite thing to work with is what's called the Epigenius Kids. It has, um, I think, 1,350 milligrams of fruits and like 350 milligrams of vegetables. An average daily serving is 350 milligrams from what the World Health Association says that we need, organization, I should say. So it's literally getting all of the fruits and veggies that we need in a day in one glass. It has your amino acids, your micronutrients, your cherry juice. And it has the biomedic right in it. So we're cleaning baby's GI tract out. We're getting that glyphosate out and we're repairing their gut biome. And it's a creamy chocolate shake. So it's amazing. This is such like, for me as a mom, it's like um, that mental relief. Like, oh my gosh, they're getting what they need. We're good. Um, so that's like an amazing thing to work with for your babies and then start helping your, your babies rebound from the glyphosate injury that they're getting and the most toxic foods that we give our babies is honestly cheerios cheerios goldfish anything from general mills or nabisco like all of that stuff if it's not organic it is loaded in pesticides and the very sad part is is that wheat they actually will spray they spray it wheat before the harvest is finished so that it can fast dry it so they can get a second harvest so we actually see wheat with an extremely concentrated level of glyphosate. So all the celiacs that's on the rise is actually glyphosate injury um, happening in the, in the baby and in the mama. And so we are starting to see neurological stuff develop from this. So when we have the celiac or we have glyphosate injury, we start to see ADHD, we start to see autism, we start to see hormone imbalance, we start to see postpartum depression, we start to see malabsorption and malnourishment, we start to see liver injury. Um, you name it, the list goes on. Ringing in the ears. These are all signs of this level of, of nervous system and gut injury in the body. So mamas, do your very best to eat organic and then to start supporting your body with the right things that it absolutely needs. And then support your babies by fruits, berries, melons, and organic veggies, sweet potatoes, things that come from root seed from the earth, like go to your local co-op and get the local beets and roast them or juice them. Um, things that come from the dirt, because soil health is human health. And so we have, you know, kids that are getting sick frequently, that are getting ear infections, tonsil stones, st uh, strep, getting their tonsils taken out. This is all a sign of stagnation in the lymphatic system. We need to clean up the diet and start repairing the gut injury. So I could talk forever on this topic, but I want to open it up for questions or, or anybody that wants to share anything. Any mamas that can resonate to the postpartum depletion, postpartum blues that want to share a little bit? 
Um, I can share. Um, my name is Katie. I um, have, my daughter is 11 months old today and I have been doing these um, regenerative protocols for, I'm in my second month and um, she's sleeping amazingly and I'm sleeping really well. Um, my mind has calmed down and I just feel like a really good calm energy that I didn't have before. Um, I was more stressed than I realized. Um, so I just, um, I'm feeling really good in my skin and my daughter's feeling really well. Her eyes are really bright. She's happy. She's sleeping well. Um, she's regular now. Um, I, you know, I, it was, it didn't dawn on me that my baby should be going to the bathroom more often. Um, and I should know these things, number three, but, um, she's regular now and it's incredible. So I'm really thankful and I'm learning a lot, but it's, it's been amazing. So. Thank you so much, Katie. Um, that's amazing. Yes. And that's like the other thing, what we, what we don't eliminate, we accumulate. So if we are eating, we should be pooping. And when we're not getting rid of that waste, the waste from the colon is digestive waste. And it's also organ waste. So from our other organs that are cleansing, it jumps into the colon and the colon has to eliminate that waste. And so when we aren't, we are reabsorbing that waste back into the tissues of the body and back into the lymphatic system. And this will make your baby more susceptible to, to infections, to you know ear infections, to lymphatic stagnation, to fungal infections, to skin issues, because the body has to eliminate the waste. So if it's not coming out through the urine and through the, the um, feces, then the body will actually push it through the skin and your kids will get eczema. They'll get rashes, they'll get hives, they'll have, you know, the bumps on the back of their arm. Um, and so our babies shouldn't have to be suffering. And then we use prescribe a topical steroid cream to calm it down, which just actually suppresses it deeper into their lymphatic system. It doesn't actually help their body cleanse and purify from the inside out. It actually pushes it back in. So um, thank you so much, Katie, for sharing that such a powerful testimonial. Are there any other mamas on here that are coming from the other side that want to share either their journey so far, if they can resonate with anything here? Um, Carrie, I was going to say something. I'm, I'm postpartum also. I um, have a six month old and um, I felt like I was doing really, really well on, I was taking some other supplements and I was eating organic, really clean, all the things. Um, but I hit a place probably about four months ago when we moved houses that I was just worn out <laughs> and, um, I felt like I was drinking coffee a lot more often than I usually would. Sorry for the noise in the background. I've got all my kids right here. Um, hold on. <laughs> they're, they're totally fine. It's not even that loud. Just keep rolling. Della has four kids under seven, right? Yeah. Yeah, I've got four kids under seven. We are at my um, family's in Tennessee, actually. I got them. Who's good? Okay. My husband's taking a lunch break, so. Um, but yes. So I felt like I had, you know, I, I knew, I knew a lot about holistic health just from my own setting, but. I had hit a place where I was just um, needing coffee every day, you know, just to have energy and, um, and also just needing another, a deeper cleanse, you know, um, I could feel, I felt like my system was not moving quite as frequently, even on magnesium. And um, so I was just kind of getting to a place where mentally I felt fatigued. And, um, and honestly, the last, um, I've been doing this, I guess, for two and a half, three weeks, or I guess, no, it's been past the three week point now. And um, I'm just feeling a lot more energy, just a lot more um, clarity, I should say. And um, I feel like I'm enjoying my son like a lot more I mean I really am like I feel I feel like even with all the craziness and all the kids like I feel like I'm making it just able to function but that's the word I'm able to function better so amazing 
And it's like, these are such sweet times of life that we don't want to be having this dark cloud and feeling incapable. So thank you, Della, so much for sharing. I know like that depletion can be so real. And I remember thinking with Mila, like, what am I doing wrong? I'm seven months, you know, I'm, she was seven months old and I was like, I eat all organic. I juice, like I do all the things, like, what am I missing? And when I got this in my body, it was like the lights came on. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm back. I'm like, oh, here I go. Okay. And then I watched my skin tighten. That was bizarre. I was like, what? People were like, what are you doing? <laughs> I was like, I swear I didn't, I had nothing crazy. No Botox or I don't even know what you would do to tighten your skin. But um, it was a really immediate difference for me. So I'm really grateful that I found this. And I just come from the really the authentic place of service to mamas because moms are suffering so deeply and we already don't get enough support in our allopathic community. So we need to support each other in this way and help moms know that there are solutions to sleep, not only for themselves, but for their babies. The cherry juice is great for your kiddos. They will sleep through the night. They will start to reduce their inflammation in their body. They'll start to repair their gut biome so that they're not bouncing off the walls with energy and like being spastic like this is all the all the behavioral stuff that we deal with with children or I shouldn't say all a large portion of what we deal with behaviorally in children is directly related to their gut biome and the health of their physical body so moms we don't have to suffer at the level that we do there are solutions there are opportunities and so and whoever brought you to this call can hook you up with more information um, on how to get this stuff into your hands. It's all organic. It's the highest quality, ca highest caliber, anything I've ever found out there. I really sought out to find the purest solution and it, it blew my expectations away. So not only is everything organic and sprouted and wind dried, but it's triple tested in a plant identification system for its purity and potency. It has third party studies and um, certified by the detox project. Um, to remove glyphosate. So this company is really, really in service to eliminating chemical pesticides from our mamas, from all people and from the planet as well. And so we are here to like, to change the trajectory of how it's going for our children. We need to, we cannot see 50% of all children with disease and one in 25 with autism. So it's unacceptable. Um, and I know we're a little over on time. I see Camille's hand raised. Do you want to share something, Camille? Yeah, hi. Thanks, Carrie. Um, this is such a good call. Um, I just have a quick question about the biomedic. I am still nursing, but my little guy, he only nurses to sleep once, you know, just at bedtime for like 10 minutes and he passes out. Um, and I've been taking between one and two biomedic a day. He does drink the epigenius, but he's not very consistent. Like he's just like, he's that, that kid that's really stubborn and kind of just wants to do the things his own way. <laughs> so I can't always get that in him. Um, so I'm curious because he's nursing, you know, such a small amount. Um, would you, I mean, is the amount... I don't even know if you know the answer, but um, with the amount of biomedic that I'm taking a day, would you say that that's sufficient to get it into his system or should I try another way? You could try like emptying a half of a capsule into his juice or into a coconut milk for him. Like what does he drink throughout the day? Um, he drinks water. He'll drink like a green spectrum or some yeah. power shake, um, but he's just not consistent. Um, he likes the aloe digest and um the does apothecary for sure that's his like favorite yeah, put it right in there sprinkle it in okay yeah they just half a capsule the capsule up and do a half a capsule in the in the cup and that's nice. okay the biomedic is sweet in flavor so they don't even notice like i'll open it up and sprinkle it in mila's juice and she has no idea it's there mm, okay good to know okay awesome thank you for sharing you're welcome all right, any last questions at all? I know this this topic actually, this this weekend, I wanna tell you Ella Francis, I think is on this call. Um, we are, Ella is amazing and she's been like a, in a mama cohort that I, she started a mama cohort that I um, joined a while back. I feel like it was October or November and just like a support group for mamas, like with babies. And it's been amazing. Like we've got like deeply connected with these other women and 
we are all offering solutions. So she organized a maternal wellness summit that's this weekend. And I'm speaking on deeper on this topic, like more science and like more solutions. This is like a quick, fast overview. Um, so I'll be talking and then like tons of other practitioners. And Ella, I don't know if you want to come off of mute to talk about it real quick, but I'd love to feature you and what you've organized for moms in this world. Good job, buddy. Hi, <laughs> thanks, Carrie. I'm just going to step outside quick because I just finished lunch. Thanks for sharing about the Maternal Wellness Summit. Yeah, it's this coming weekend. Um, it'll be all virtual. It's completely free. Um, you can find me on Instagram, Ella Fran or Carrie, and there should be a link in either of our bios to sign up and register and join us. I think Carrie's on Saturday at three, 3 p.m. Central time. Yeah, thank you for such a great, great conversation and supporting mamas. Um, I'd love to connect with anybody that needs some more support and connection during this time. Yeah. Thanks, Ella. And Ella has just gone through such a big postpartum journey with herself. So she's now integrating these protocols into her solutions and just supporting mamas across. Ella, um, Ella, what is your Instagram? Will you type it in the comments? Yeah, it's Ella Fran. And then the website is ellafrancisyoga.com. And that's where you can find the summit information and also the mama mastermind that Carrie mentioned that she's actually a part of. Mm -hmm. Yep. Just like that, Ella Fran. Yep. Yeah. So there's just a lot, there's not a lot of support out there for moms and it can be a very lonely and dark time, but it should be a really joyful and like community rich time. So we're looking to transform that. Ella and I are really teaming up to help transform the way postpartum goes for mamas and the way pregnancy goes for mamas. So we're excited to be on this mission and to support the women in the world. So thank you for being here, everyone. I'm going to stop recording here.